for our, our preseason focus is developing robust athletes to be able to handle game load, back-to-back -back match load. It's a long competitive season, so we want to be able to build robust athletes, and we do that through exposure of chronic load both in volume, so the distance that athletes cover over a week, as well as your high-speed running and very high-speed running or known as sprint distance. Uh, and then, of course, the agility and the contact aspect of the game as well. So we want to develop robust athletes. The reason that that is important from a strength perspective is that we pretty, pretty strongly believe that player availability has a strong correlation with team success. And it's probably no surprise for those that know football. If you have your best players on the park more regularly than not, you're more than likely to get into the top four or have a chance at getting into the top four. And if you're in the top four, you're more than likely, you're more favorable to be able to play in the pointy end of September, which is what our focus is. So um, developing those robust athletes, but what can easily happen in mistake one um, is that we, with the long competitive season, athletes can slip into thinking all the work is done in preseason. And as soon as the season comes around, it's now time to just focus on recovery. Um, what that means is the intensity in the gym wears off, the intensity with main training session wears off, uh, and all you're leaving your workload, uh, your training load over the week, is all left to game day. This is problematic because your loads will be significantly reduced up to 50% if the, all you're relying on is, is on game day and you're not getting in high intensity training both in the gym and on the field. In fact, one area that you can get a real competitive edge and something that we do with our programming on the Prepare Like a Pro online program is we have a strong emphasis on strength and power in season compared to pre-season. Number two, as I mentioned, the recovery co culture. So if you're going from, let's say, over pre-season, your four-week rolling average at times was up to 36Ks uh, over a week, uh, and you strip that back down to only 24 or under, so less than, uh, more than 30% of reduced of chronic volume, then you're you're doing your athletes a disservice. You're going to detrain all that work that you did over, particularly the January and February, the biggest months. Um, are going to you're going to start to see a detraining effect around that June July period. So we need to make sure we're staying within our chronic loads of about thirty percent. So if that's for an AFL athlete, for your semi professionals, you might be getting thirty k's over a week um, over your chronic load of preseason. So we want to ma maintain over twenty one k's per week. That's including game day in season. In terms of mistake number three, um, that that max velocity exposure. And that we want to have that within either minus two from game day or minus three. That research is from Martin Boucher, which again I'll add to the to the link. Mistake number three also entails sorry, mistake number four will be your ability to train at above match intensity. If we look at Jason Delaney's work with rugby athletes, the metrics he used is work rate per minute, which we everyone commonly knows, the distance that you're achieving per minute. Typically, like a midfielder might get 120. Uh, meters per minute. Um, so we want to make sure that during your main training session, you're training above that you know, uh, for your training drills. So if you if you're averaging 120 work rate work rate per minute, we want to work up to 140 150 um, meters per minute. The average accelerations that you're completing in a minute particularly important for your inside mids, your speed forwards, your speed defenders, your key forwards. So um, those that really need to get off the mark really quickly. Uh, and we can use that to determine if you're training at that intensity, particularly from a um, combative point of view as well when we're looking at deceleration. So use use the accelerations per minute as a guide of match intensity and are you training at match? So if you work out your norm from playing a few games or looking at last year's data, make sure your main training sessions, you, you're uh, getting above that in at least one or two of the drills.